In this video, we'll talk about the debugger and profiler that is provided with the GDevelop game engine. So, a debugger helps us to remove errors and faults in our game, and a profiler helps us to optimize the game by telling us that how much time has been spent on the sections of our game. So, basically, we use profiler for optimization and debugger to remove the errors in our game. So let's get started by creating a new project and I will create a platformer game because that is the simplest example that I can think of. Um, so let's say that you're developing this game and you're developing a platformer game. So how debugger can be useful. So we will um, uh, find an error. So let me just create an error first of all. So let's just say that, um, let me just go here and I'll just go to the uh, objects management and Mm. we can see that um, let me actually you know what let me just go to the GUI management and in the GUI basically let me just play this game and let me show you that what we have in this game so you might have played this example if you are a GW user by now let's just look at this again so there is a platformer character you can move it left and right and it can jump and collect coins and whenever it collect coins uh, score is updated so the score was zero initially and now it's 100. So the score should change whenever we click on coin. So how does it work? So if we just go to the object management events, we can see that whenever the player is in collision with the coin, um, a scene variable called the score is um, incremented by 100. And then um, we there is a no condition in GUI management events that that no condition means it will always execute. So every frame we are going to change the text score uh, to the variable score that we were incrementing. So that way, uh, right um, initially the score variable, scene variable score is going to be zero, and whenever the player is going to touch the coin, it is going to change. Uh, it's going to incre increase by one hundred. So we're going to see a one hundred increase uh, right here in this GUI. So let us say that uh, for some reason you decided to disable this event. So in such a case what will happen is that when we play the game, let me play this game, okay, uh, see I collected a coin but I did not got my 100 points. Yeah, so what could be the problem? So you are now confused when you don't know what happened because you, do, you don't remember that you just now disabled this event. So in such a case, we can use debugger to uh, remove such an error, such a problem. So let me show you, this is just going to be one example guys and there can be a million types of errors and once you get a, an idea of how to use the debugger, you will realize that how powerful this tool is. Uh, so let me just go to debugger and um, by the way this bug icon here this is how you launch your game with a debugger and a profiler so just click on this thing and there's going to be two options uh, choose the second option which is start preview with debugger and performance profiler so the game is now launched with debugger you will get um, yeah so let me just first uh, introduce you to these three windows so you'll see a um, an extra tab called debugger launched this time when you launch the game with debugger and we're gonna have three windows here first of all the inspectors window the profiler window and then this you know this middle window is says pause the game something like that this is the journal window so uh, to, um, to understand what debugger does um, especially in GDevelop um, let me just tell you that what we do uh, in debugging is that we inspect different parts of the game especially the variables of the game uh, at least in GDevelop that's what we do um, so we inspect all the variables and we see that if their value is working we can also inspect instances of objects so I can inspect uh, this player right here I can see his position and let me just show you that so um, the way we inspect is uh, using uh, this inspector window. There is a button, this button called refresh. So when you refresh, you'll see a list of variables. Uh, so first of all, we have the global variables 
and apparently there is not a single Google variable in this game. Then we have scenes and in the scene we have currently one scene running, new scene and in new scene we can see the properties of the new scene, we can see where the camera is, uh, camera's position, the time scale, the camera zoom, the layers, you know, we can see a lot of information so you can actually see that what's going on and what's not uh, going on in the game and by inspecting that, by analyzing it, you can actually, um, you know, find the problem. We can also check the scene variables and you can see the scene variable is zero right now, the score scene variable and we can also see an individual instance. So for example, this player here, let me show you this player, this guy, our alien guy, we can actually see here uh, its position, angle, layer, Z order, everything, you know. Um, so for example, this X position is 58 right now and if I just go and move it a little bit, and I again click refresh. Yeah, so you have to click refresh again to see the changes. If I click on refresh, you can see the X position has now changed. Um, one more thing, uh, in in the new scene or in the in your scene that you're inspecting, you will see a list of all the objects that are in that scene. And in front of the name of these objects, you are going to see the number of instances. So for example, there is only one player object in the game but there are 20 platform objects and uh, there are eight clouds and you can actually go and uh, inspect all of these instances individually uh, and to see the problem so what's uh, what was our problem yeah so the problem that we had was that our score is not getting updated so if I play the game I collect the coin and I did not got my hundred points so where's, where could be the problem? So to find the problem, we know that this um, this text actually is representing um, what we call the score variable. Uh, the score is a scene variable and should get updated. So this problem can be caused by two um, main reasons, which are, which are pretty obvious. Either the text is not um, you know the, either the text is not getting updated or the score variable is not getting updated because we have collected the coin the coin has disappeared so the score variable should have increased to 100 and it should have been here like right here so it's not it's not there so let's inspect the scene variables and the scene variable here in the scene variable we can see the okay let me just click on refresh and you can see the score is now 100 because we have collected one coin for one coin we get 100 points so if the score is 100 and we are still not seeing 100 here that means the problem is not with the score variable but the problem is with the GUI uh, or um, basically this text box that we have here so let's just go to the GUI management and oops we had disabled it see so this is how we can actually find the problem and solve it so now the only thing that i have to do is i have to just make it toggle disabled and now it is enabled and launch the preview again so if i just go and launch the preview um you can see let me just collect a coin yeah boom you know it is getting updated so we just solve an error using debugger so this is what debugger do okay this is how we use the debugger um, so uh, we can inspect all the all the uh, all the objects we can inspect all the variables uh, in our game so this is how we do it and yeah i think that pretty much sums up the debugger part okay so enough of the debugger let's just now talk about the profiler so a profiler is, as I said, is going to tell us about the time spent on a particular section of our game. So the profiler window is down here. You can expand it from this middle bar. Just, you know, left click and drag. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start profiling, uh, which means we are going to start, uh, we will start to measure the amount of time spent on a particular section of our game. So to do that, just click on the start profiling 
it is going to measure at the maximum 10 seconds or 10 seconds but you know you can stop it early so i'll just stop it and you can actually see that how much time has been spent um, on different sections of our game as far as i know there are total five sections um that you know that is going to be uh, shown here so we can actually see the um, time spent on each and every single uh, um, section so here we can actually see that that what is using uh, how much cpu so for example if let us say that the callbacks and extensions here use zero milliseconds but let us say that our game was running very slow and then we come here and we see that like like most of the time has been spent on extensions then it's probably an extension that you added to your game which is slowing down your game so you can remove that extension or you can optimize that so basically that's what it does and you can actually see here that we have the last run collected on 426 frames so um, all this data is from last 426 frames uh, and that can be like uh, depending upon your machine and depending upon the game and the optimization uh, you can actually see like 60 frames per second 30 frames per second so depending on uh, depending upon that this might change okay. so ideally you should have at least 60 frames per second and with most GDL of games that I have made and I have seen um, 60 frames per second is a very um, e you can easily have that so um, uh, GDL is a very well optimized game engine so if your game is lagging and slowing down it is probably on your part uh, I can just tell you that the most common reason why your game is slowing down is because of high resolution textures just make sure that you don't use them and you're going to probably see uh, in this section objects visi visibility that um, the uh, time use is really very high um, if you know the high resolution textures are there so yeah this is how you can use profiler so this is a very uh, short introduction to debugger and profiler i hope you found it useful and if you did so um, subscribe uh, like comment there is a text version of the same tutorial just go and check that out yeah thank you